It's time now for Anderson Speedway's Track Talk. Catch up with everything that's going on at Anderson Speedway with Rick Dawson and Gary Mong. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Track Talk. Rick Dawson, Gary Mong, we are live from the Mounds Mall we Special are. Events Studio. Kind of a hectic evening. It is for you, isn't it? It seems to be. <laughs> Uh, started off this morning on the radio on another station, and, and then it was nonstop. It's had the month five, of May. What do you expect? a 500 festival yes. meeting with the Black and White Committee with the Rotary. and It's month of May. It is. Beautiful day outside. It is. And I think it's going to be this way all week long as far as temperature goes. It looks so. like it. Uh, you know, the weekend is, I mean, they're talking about rain. They don't know I mean, it's obvious it's not anything major yeah. uh, from what I can see right now. If it was going to be a all-day washout, whatever, this weekend, it looks like what we're into is the summer trend where the sun the heats, pop -up stuff. heats up the uh, atmosphere and we end up with pop-ups. Yeah. But so we had a beautiful Saturday night this past did, Saturday night. You couldn't have asked for a better night or better weather for racing as we had Saturday night. We did. Had the... Uh, uh, the first appearance of the uh, CRA Late Model Sportsman Series there, along with uh, our street stocks and the Markham Welding Pro Compacts. I had a good feel of them in all three divisions Saturday night. Had an interesting race. It was the opening, well, it actually wasn't the opening race for the CRA Late Model Sportsman, but uh, it was their second race because I believe they did race at Raceway Park last week or week previous before. Previous Friday, yeah. And I think they're racing again this Friday night at Raceway Park. But it uh, was kind of like it was their first race. <laughs> <laughs> it was. We had a lot of, I, I noticed there was a lot of new drivers there that I had, had not recognized in the past, uh, uh, even ran, run at Anderson Speedway. So that kind of kind of made it a little bit more interesting. Several young drivers. Yes. I think I hold the series as young anymore. I know. I, either I'm getting really <laughs> old, I already feel that way, or these kids are just really starting out. Young. I mean, when you have a, a the gentleman who we'll talk about later who won the race at 16 years old as your winner, that's that you're right. It kind of makes you feel like, uh, are we, I mean, we used to look at drivers as being 30s, 40s, and 50s, and now we're looking at teenagers and 20-year-olds. It's unbelievable. Uh, before we get into last Saturday night, I want to remind all of our competitors, we do have an open practice this Friday evening. Pit gates will open at 4. We'll practice from 5 till 8 or thereabouts. Uh, anybody that or any vehicle that races at the Speedway during the whole season is welcome to come out. Uh, I do know I've talked to a couple of our sprint car teams that are actually going to be out and uh, shaking things and down. For, we've had some sprint cars last two or three weeks. So. And yeah. then on Saturday night, we have the CRA Series Street Stocks, uh, the Hearts Auto Figure Eights, their second race of the year, and Thunder Roadster. So usually when we have the CRA Street Stocks, we have a bunch of cars. We On not the, the 200 lap race, but just on the regular CRA Street Stock races, we usually average anywhere from 25 to 35 Absolutely. cars. So, yeah. And great racing. I'm looking forward to... Uh, to that on Saturday night, and I wanted to, and I, I just got busy and didn't get him called, but I wanted to get uh, Daniel Hart on here. He's the CRA official that is in charge of the the uh, sportsmen and the street stocks for the Champion Racing Association. To kind of give us his feel on what transpired Saturday night and and uh, what why he thought things went the way they did. Yeah. I mean, it was. It was a very entertaining race for the spectators. It was, absolutely. If you were a competitor, you didn't like it very well. But for the spectators, it was. That was some of the most side-by-side -side racing in late models I've seen in a long time. And, and I'm not talking, uh, it wasn't, you know, with the, the rubbing and stuff, Rick. It was a, some good side-by-side -side racing. Well, I, I want to get into that right after we talk about the results. But Greg Van Alsu is the reigning CRA Sportsman late model champion. Set fast time at 12.878. Uh, Jack Dossey, the third, was second quick, and Billy Van Meter was third quick. And then we had a 75 lap feature, which had um, several. Did it have several lead changes? I think it did. It did, yes. Um, I seen the first seven laps, and I seen the last five. <laughs> and so, I, I, what happened in between, I seen coming down the ramp in the pits. But I got to tell you, 
and the young man that won it is should, is no surprise to me or anybody else. Jack Dossie the third. That young man can pedal a car, and he I'm sure telling can. you, he can put it. If that car's hooked, and he's got some of the best people setting that car up, including his dad, who's no stranger to the racetrack right. or winning, uh, made some moves. And and each time this kid raced so far this year that I've seen him, he's done something that's just remarkable remarkable to me for a 16-year-old kid. Uh, Jason Atkinson, who is a powerhouse in that division is. and is a great competitor and a tough competitor, was leading the race, and Jack Dossie the third was behind him. I think I was on a restart, maybe. Yeah, I can't recall. We had several of those. But And this was early in the race, if I recall. Jack was... Jack was on the outside and raced raced Jason, I don't know, two or three laps yes. on the outside Absolutely. and passed him, going away, which, you know, I, I stood there and watched that, and I thought, well, wait a minute. That that usually doesn't happen, no. does it? And he did, and he pulled it off, and through several different incidents and wrecks and whatever, he was able to uh, stay up front, keep his nose clean. I think Jason had some, I think he lost power steering early in the race, and we had a red flag, and he was able to go back in the pits, and I think he got it fixed. He was actually able to come up and finish second. J.P. Crabtree out of Muncie, another second-generation yes. driver, uh, had a good showing in third. young man by the name of Matthew Parsons was uh, fourth, and Tony Broody in the nine car finished fifth. Uh, I think we only had six cars finish the race, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think we started uh, how many? Sixteen. 16. So yeah, had an incident on the very first lap, and uh, brought out the caution. Uh, and we can debate that a little bit. I, I don't want to come down on anybody because it was just one of those nights. It just happened to be a full moon too. So it was. I didn't that, even. That contributed to, that. to it a lot. <laughs> but uh, on the first lap, uh, they had Rich. they hadn't they had taken the green, went around. Rich Segvich, which is glad to see him back at the yes. track for the first time this year in the 91 car, spun down in turn four. He was off the track. Yes. And and obviously waiting on the cars, the field to pass so he could get back in line. And as soon as they did, he took off the tower, which was the CRA race direction, called a caution. Um I, and I get it both ways. And if somebody's going to err on the side of safety, I've got no problem. Right. But but cautions breed cautions, and when he said, told you to throw the yellow flag, uh, the cars were had just passed you going into turn one, right. and I don't know what happened, but I'm guessing uh, one of the cars checked up, I think maybe the 811 or whatever, and Billy Van Beter was behind him and clipped him or whatever. Billy ended up with the worst end of the deal, so yeah. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but, but, I, but it was because the yellow flag, I think, right. and that's just my opinion, and I'm not being critical of anybody. Again, the caution came out for safety, and I've got no problem with that, but um, that, that took out the uh, 811 and the 23. Uh, right off the bat. Right. And then during the race, uh, I think Grant, or Greg, I'm sorry, Greg Van Alst, who's the defending late model sportsman champion, if I'm not mistaken, in the uh, CRA Super Series, isn't he? He is. Okay. I said that earlier. Yes. I'm You've been just, listening I, to the program said, tonight, haven't you? I have. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, he was he was running pretty strong and had uh, uh, Jack behind him there for a little bit there. And then And I can't remember who took who, but they, they, they touched and both of them spun where they both had to take their spot back toward the back of the field, and that's where Jack Dawsey Jr., Jack Dawsey III, I should say, started making his move out on the outside there, coming back through the pack, and that was what was was, was impressive. Chris Braun came down from northern Indiana. Great young man. Uh, took a tough hit, and so did Rich. Yes. Uh, Rich, later in the race, it must have been about lap 46, spun down and coming off a of turn two, and he spun up into the middle of the track, and Chris Brown had nowhere to go and hit him hit him head on. Uh, I think Rich got banged up a little bit, but he's told, i seen on his Facebook, he's told everybody he'll be back. Good. It's just one of those things that happened. Chris had nowhere to go, no. and it was unfortunate that that, that happened, but... Uh, and uh, hats off to Daniel Hart again uh, late in the race. Uh, the nine car and Jack Dossie, I think on a restart, uh, started side by side. And I think Jack might have been on the outside, if I'm I not mistaken. He, yeah, he right. definitely I think was. I you're right, yes. 
and something, I mean, the nine car did something that I just totally don't like at our speedway because I like to see side-by-side racing. If you're on the inside, you can push your car up and pinch the guy off into yes. the wall and keep your position, and I don't like that. I like racing side-by-side like Jason and Jack did early in the race. But uh, later, late in the race, the nine car pinched Jack. I mean, he really, I mean, it was obvious. He pinched him right up into the wall. He'd done it two or three other laps kind of subtly, right. but then he came off four, and, I mean, he just put him in the wall. And uh, uh, they called a caution. I, I think there might have been an incident or something. I don't know. But anyway, caution came out. They, well, Jack spun. Yes, they both did. Yes. They put the nine car to the tail and give Jack his spot back. I, I like that because when you can tell, normally, you know, the rule is if, if you're involved in the caution, you go to the tail unless you're trying to avoid an incident or it's intentional. or And they can be argued that, you know, pinching somebody in the wall is intentional. Right. And, and I, I told Daniel after the race, I really like that call. I don't know if it's consistent for, with what they normally do, but that, that was a good call. Not that I cared who won the race i don't i just don't like to see people pinched right. into the wall so and 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 jack dalsey the third along with two or three others proved that there are multiple grooves of that track multiple racing lines and when they're when they use them properly rick they put on some darn good racing great race look forward to having the cra sportsman back again i think next month when they come back we have our mcgonagall engine lake models in a week from this saturday in our spring the championships, championships. Yes. so that'll be a great night we had a uh, street stock race we with did. Anderson Speedway Street Stock. We had 15 of those strong, getting a good, strong base field uh, built for the, for the uh, street stocks this year. Champion Josh Poor showed them away around qualifying with fast time at 13.734 seconds. That's pretty quick. That is street quick. Stock. I think... Wasn't that a new track record? It might well I be. Think it I think doesn't say I, this on here. No, I haven't got that information. I do believe our, yet. our two divisions, Rick, uh, the Pro Compacts and the Street Sox, did have new track records Saturday night. Great. We had Heat Race, and you can tell me, he's going to kick me if I get this wrong, but I believe Andrew Cook scored his first Heat Race or not. Uh, I think he's had them before. He has? Uh, yes, in the, in the street stock. Well, I know he was a happy camper, yes, and so was. was his dad. I had a bring from ear to ear when I seen him back in the pits. But Andrew Cook won the first heat race. Uh, Jeff Hopkins, pardon me, <coughs> Jeff, <coughs> Jeff Hopkins won the second heat race. Yeah, I need to tell you when I'm getting ready to do that. Yeah, <laughs> I guess you do, so I can keep on going here for you. <laughs> and then we had a 30-lap uh, feature, and veteran Jimmy Kirby uh, prevailed over another veteran and former champ or, uh, and champion of the street stock division, Calvin Parham, who's back for the full season again and racing hard and having a having a good time doing it. And that race went uh, green to checkered. My favorite yes. time. Good racing. It was good racing. I didn't get a seat. Jimmy Jimmy pretty well had the field covered, but uh, back in the pack here there was some really good uh, jostling for positions. So they, but it, like I said, it was good clean racing all the way through. Well, when you got Three drivers, Jimmy Kirby, Calvin Parham, then Josh Poor, who finished third, racing together. Yes. You know that you're going to see some Absolutely. good, fast, clean racing. Those guys are the best of the best in street stock racing. And James Kirby, Jimmy's son, finished fourth. And Danny Adams in the 57 car. It's good to see yes. him have a have a top five. He was having finish. some issues with his car earlier in the evening there, I think, during <laughs> practice and stuff. And I'm not, not sure, Rick, if he even got to qualify. But... Uh, um, if he did, uh, I know he he missed some practice time because of working on the car, but uh, that's good for him to come and make a he, top five. He had no time qualifying. Yeah. Okay. That means he didn't qualify. That's right. So I, I remember he was having some issues with the car. Pro Compacts, we had a good field of those, and it looked like it was going to be a trifecta for Adam, Adam Lee, Lee, who's won every race he was in so far up till Saturday night, set fast time. He won the heat race, and then... Uh, and Matt Tharp won the second heat race, and then came the feature, and it didn't work out. Twice didn't work out. He and another car had, Randy Hoppus. had tangled up, and I don't know if it cut a tire down. Tire yeah, going down the front yes. stretch. Yes, so uh, so that was Randy Hoppus' first win of the season in the uh, Pro Compact. Look, I did actually he has a get strong to car see that. too. Yeah, he did. They both had strong cars, and it just looked like Adam got a little bit impatient and uh, cut a tire when when he got into the side of Randy, but. Uh, he did get Randy. Somebody, I can't remember if it was him or another car, got Randy. It was him. Got him sideways in the backstretch. Yes. 
pretty cool. Backed off. Backed off. Let him get straightened up, and, and they continued racing. He didn't so drive through him. It was a good good race. Matt Tharp was, Randy Hoppus, of course, won the feature. Matt Tharp was second. Billy Hooten was third. Champion Ron Phipps was fourth. And Marshall Clark rounded out the top five. That was last Saturday night. We have a whole lot of stuff to talk about coming up. We do. Yet this week. And next week. And next, next week, week. And the week after that. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll fill you in on all the details. You're listening to Anderson Speedway's Track Talk. Buying American always wins, whether on the track or on your driveway. To get your winner's circle, check out the great products made at UAW-represented GM plants right here in the USA. You'll be sure to find a car, truck, or crossover that'll fit your needs And with many choices from Chevy, Buick, GMC, or Cadillac, you can't go wrong. Remember, buy American and buy UAW GM. When I was a boy, we had family pigeon dinners on Sunday, so I knew on Saturdays mom would be in the kitchen baking pies, and especially sugar cream pies. I will never forget pulling a chair up to the table. I always turned the chair around back so I could perch on my knees while watching mom take her fingers and flute the pie crust. You know, that little squiggly thing all the way around. And of course, after the pies were baked, we would beg and plead with mom only to have her put her foot down and say, nope, we were not going to get any pie until everybody came by tomorrow. But on Sunday at the family gathering, that first bite of pie was always worth the wait. Mom's a little older now, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy freshly made sugar cream pies together. Now, instead of mom making them, I pick up a Wix sugar cream pie. They use simple, fresh ingredients because of Wix rigid freshness standards. The wholesomeness and taste of their pies is better than mom's. But don't tell her I said that. Now you can pick up a Wix sugar cream pie at most of your local grocery stores. Just look for them in the frozen dessert aisle. I'm Brownie, and I can honestly say about Wix pies, you don't just eat them, you enjoy them. Heart attack? Stroke? serious injury a sudden health crisis can happen to anyone at any time so when bad things happen choose good people st vincent anderson regional hospital has the area's most advanced emergency care with a state designated level 3 trauma center an internationally accredited chest pain center for heart attack patients and advanced certification for primary stroke care we have all the resources to deliver the care you need for any serious or life-threatening emergency St. Vincent Anderson Regional is the only emergency department in the area with an on-site helicopter. And our $27 million state-of-the-art surgery pavilion opens later this year. Bad things can happen to anyone. Thankfully, good people are ready to help. Choose emergency care from St. Vincent Anderson Regional, the spirit of caring. Visit stvincent.org slash Anderson Regional to learn more. Honey, stop! Oh, my gosh, that's Diggity's back there. You mean the new Diggity's Frozen Treat Factory? I heard it's unbelievable. Everybody's talking about it. They have everything yummy. Yeah, I heard they have ice cream, yogurt, custard, sorbet. And gelato, plus fruit smoothies, and that's just the beginning. I heard Diggity's has over 250 toppings, not 30 or 40 like those other places. And you can even get the candy to go separately. We can eat outside on their huge patio by the fire, too. Okay, let's see. Frozen yogurt, ice cream, custard, sorbet, and gelato. With 250 toppings or a plain old frozen yogurt shop with limited toppings? <laughs> Diggity's it is! Diggity's wants to cater your event. Diggity's can set up at your event inside or out and provide delicious smoothies, frozen cappuccinos, candies, and frozen treats to your guests. Diggity's is perfect for weddings, company picnics, group outings, sporting events, festivals, you name it, just call Diggity's. 765-393-0033 today for more information. Motav Incorporated, where imagination is the only limitation. We serve residential, commercial, industrial, and municipal customers as your metals warehouse and fabrication center. We do all types of fabrication using the latest technology with unmatched speed, accuracy, and durability on any substrate. Our ornamental division handles all types of interior and exterior work, including rails, fences, gates, and more. So contact us at mofabbing.com to fabricate your dreams of tomorrow today. This program is a presentation by Anderson Speedway. The content contained in this program is that of the host and guests and not this station. Uh, we're back. I know, but I'm Gary's not sure. Yeah, I'm you don't know who this is. Do you? <laughs> Tell me. No. 
He does not know. Yep. Well, yeah, Sammy Hagar, well, yeah. what's the matter with you? Yeah, well, yeah. We're back. Anderson Speedway's <laughs> track track talk. Thank you, Wade. Uh, the the city of Anderson Little 500 Festival is in full swing. Yes, it is. And it is race month in Indiana, but especially in Anderson, Madison County. It's from the from now until the end of the month, including the end of the month this year, something for everybody. With the uh, whether you're a race fan or not, there's something for everybody with the City of Anderson Little 500 Festival. I believe the 28th year for this, we're, we've surpassed two million dollars raised for local charity and going higher by the minute. That's fantastic. This week, if you're a bingo fan, uh, it's seven or from uh, six till ten o'clock right here at the Mounds Mall in the former Sears building. This Thursday night, the Cross Street Payless is having bingo. And uh, you want to be here for that? That's from six to ten this Friday. The Burton Brothers Amusements start out at the in the Applewood parking lot. I believe they're in the old uh, BW3 parking lot okay. out there. Mo- had to move them a little bit because we built some buildings. Yes, <laughs> but they're going to be there. Then, if you're a motorcycle rider or enthusiast, or if you are a pet and or animal enthusiast. Saturday morning, uh, register from 9 to 10.30. The Paws and Claws Motorcycle Ride. Our good friends at Double T Leather are doing this, and they're, all the proceeds go to benefit the Madison County Humane Society. I understand they're going to ride clear down to uh, Metamora, wow. which is pretty neat, yes. and uh, take take the back roads down there, and, and they've got a special lunch set up at a restaurant, and then they're coming back and ending at Jimbo's uh, over on main street but uh that's a lot of fun goes for a great cause uh the mass county main society that's the pause and claws motorcycle ride this saturday registration is from 10 or from 9 to 10 30 30 <laughs> in 30 30? and uh stands are up at 11 o'clock for the ride i learned that lingo this morning oh, on the so other now side. you know motorcycle lingo do you double t leather great friends of uh racing animals and anderson speedway support those good folks then uh saturday afternoon from four to eight out at the speedway uh plan to come a little early and uh donate blood to the american red red cross nice. and when you do that you'll get a free ticket to a future race at anderson speedway to all the donors so we're looking to get. That's cool. <coughs> we're looking. Pardon me. We're looking to get a lot of blood uh, Saturday night for the American Red Cross. Then next Tuesday, mark this on your calendar, uh, and we'll be going there after we get off the show next Tuesday. But next Tuesday at Culver's of Anderson, down on exit 26, yes. Dove Harbor Day, 10% of all the sales at Culver's next Tuesday goes back to the Dove Harbor. Uh, it's a great cause. Cheryl and Tom do a great job for uh, at Culver's, and the food is fantastic. You can't lose on that one. I think we were there last week. If I'm not mistaken. We were, and yeah. we're going going back again next, next Tuesday to do, our, to do our part. Golfers, a week from tomorrow at Grand, at Meadowbrook Golf Course, nine o'clock, the Payless Little 500 Annual Golf Tournament takes place. It's uh, all the uh, starting money is being donated to the Second Harvest Food Bank of East Central Indiana. That is the charity of choice for Payless uh, this year during the Little 500 Festival. Last year, they raised over $25,000 oh, to help, well, help, uh, help stop hunger in uh, Central Indiana. So uh, if you're a golfer, it's a great time. It's only 50 bucks. If you play in many golf trees, you know how cheap that is. And you basically get it all back in food and prizes and everything, and it's a fun time. That's a week from tomorrow, 9 o'clock, at Meadowbrook Golf Course, right by Anderson Speedway. We have all kinds of other things coming up. we got the Casa Wine Tasting coming up next week, uh, rummage sale, uh, the uh, big wheel races, a uh, health fair, all this. You can go to our website, click the little 500 icon, find out all the information on the little 500 there. Then speaking of the Pay Less Little 500, presented by our good friends at UAWGM, this year is going to be huge. Plan on coming to the track early. I mean, to get a great parking place. I mean, most of the folks know you get there early. But this year, there's all kinds of things to do. Kroger is bringing their Fan Fest. This is a totally fan interactive atmosphere. Gonna They're going to have a car there. You can practice changing tires, just like the NASCAR guys do. All kinds of contests, prizes. 
things things to do with the Kroger Fan Fest. This is pretty neat. Kevin Katansky at our press conference was told everybody they had a choice to go to uh, a number of different events, and they chose the Payless Little 500. That's great. In addition to that, UAWGM is bringing their uh, Made in America display. Big, huge, beautiful semi hauler, and they've got remote control racers. Got Dale Earnhardt Jr. show car. They, Danny Ernstis with UAWG, said they had a choice of taking that to the Charlotte 600, the Indianapolis 500, and they chose to come to the Payless Little 500. That's how huge of an yes. event that this has become. I haven't had a chance, and this computer's too slow to go and check now. I haven't checked our entries. They are up. Uh, three or four from this time last year. We still expect to get, I don't know, another maybe even up to 10 to 15 entries. I think we were up to 28, if I'm not mistaken, yesterday. Good, good. We're going to have a good, good, fast field. These are all good cars. Great cars. Uh, qualifying is going to be really interesting on Thursday and Friday. Of course, we got Senior Day on Thursday. That's <laughs> always a hoot. Mark your calendars for the Friday night before. We've got the Bishops coming into town. They're great. A great band, a great show. The YMCA is is putting on, the, I think they call it, uh, let me see here. It's called YMCA Friday Fan Fundraiser. That's a mouthful. It is. Uh, and <laughs> I say that they're going to play in the pavilion from uh, 8 to 11 uh, the night before the and race. And they can play and sing everything. And when I mean everything, you oldies today's music country i mean they can do it all and they're very good it'll be a great party atmosphere get, if you haven't already get your little 500 tickets now either call the track or stop by we're there every day uh they are going very fast and they're all reserved so if you've got a special place you'd like to set get out there i urge you they're going I got mine. very rapidly uh, this is uh, this event. I mean, you know, it's a labor of love. It's it exhausting, is. but I, every time I start talking about it, I just start getting get chills and I just get excited about about that fantastic race. And oh, by the way, we're going to have a race. <laughs> <laughs> There's so but many things else going on. It, yes. But before that, we still have two more weekends of racing. We do. So we were talking about them here again, real quick. This Friday night, again, open practice. Fans are welcome to come out. Yes. Doesn't cost the fans a thing. We can, we'll move you to the pit stands, and you can. Watch the cars practice from from uh, 5 till 8. Pit gates open at 4. This Saturday night, gates open at 5. We race at 8 with the CRA s- Street Stocks, the Hearts Auto, Figure 8s, and Thunder Roasters. What a great show. That's going to yes. be Saturday night. And then a week from Saturday night, our spring, championship. spring championships in our five divisions. That will be the, uh, and I just went brain dead here, Please. late models. Please go to our the McGonagall engine. McGonagall engine. I kept on calling Mark, and that's why what, McGonagall engine late models, our street stocks, Thunder Roadsters, Hearts Automotive figure eights, and the Mark and Welding Pro Compacts, all in feature racing, I believe, that week, night week for our spring Saturday. championship. Yes. Please take the time to go to our website, AndersonSpeedway.com. It's got all the information you need. And look at our sponsors. These people are the ones that make it possible Absolutely. and help us out a bunch. Uh, my thanks to... Wade Stokes, so we don't do that often enough on this show. He's doing a yeoman's job back at the studio as our producer. Hey, Dan. Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Hello, Aunt Jenny. We're Muncie. Glad to uh, have you aboard this evening. We're going to uh, catch our breath for a little bit this evening and get right back on tomorrow. We'll see all of you out the Speedway this Saturday night. You've been listening to Anderson Speedway's Track Talk. For Rick Dawson, I'm Gary Moan. Have a great week. Mm-hmm.